before we get going. I've had a few bosses in my life, had a few different jobs, and um, I've noticed that um, they can be very different in the way that they are a boss. And um, I've got a new boss at the moment in one of my jobs that I do, and um, I've been getting to know my boss. And um, people that I work with are like, why did you have to go and see the boss? Have you done something wrong? And I said, no, I'm just trying to get to know him. And they're like, what? You're trying to get to know the boss? I'm like, yeah. And uh, they're like, nobody around here, mate, gets to know the boss. And uh, I said, well, I like to get to know the boss. As a matter of fact, my whole life has been about getting to know the boss. And, uh, and so I'm sort of challenging them. And so I'm having lunch with the boss and I'm texting the boss and telling him he's doing a good job and, you know, all the rest of it. And, um, and they're like, you don't do that, mate. Um, we don't like our boss. I said, well, I like my boss. Uh, I like my boss and uh, I like my boss. And, uh, and they're just being completely confused about my attitude towards my boss. And uh, I'm like, I'm not going to work for a guy and serve a guy and not build a relationship with that guy uh, during the course of my work. It doesn't make sense to me. And they're like, you are doing it all wrong. You're stuffing up the system here. We've had a good thing going for 50 years. Don't come in here and start becoming friends with the boss. And so um, um, it's an interesting thing, you know, for me getting to know my boss. But I remember a couple of bosses that I had growing up. One boss, this was his style, right? And um, he would um, put you on a job site and he'd be like, you'll work it out, mate. I'm, I've got to go, you'll work it out, just get the job done and off you go. And so he'd leave and I'd be devastated because like, I don't know where to start, uh, I don't know what to do, I've got no one to give me any advice, I feel ill-equipped for this, he's going to come back, I'm going to be standing there crying, looking at all the work I'm supposed to be doing, not knowing what to do. This is a terrible, terrible thing. I had another boss that would give you, who's that a boss? It gives you a list of 1,000 things to do. Um, you know, I want you to do this, 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 this is the way you cut this out, mark this, put that there, join that over with that, do this, tear that down, rebuild this, do, you know, and I'm, yeah, what, yeah, I mean, you know, and then as soon as he's gone, I'm like, I can't even, what did he say? Something about, and so, you know, um, there's the boss who's like, just build whatever you like, mate. It'll be fine. You know, it'll all work out. Uh, and uh, some of us sort of feel like, uh, you know, that's our journey with God. You're right. You've got the grace on your life, sister. Just do whatever you like. It'll all work out. Uh, the other group of us are here thinking God's telling us you've got to do this, 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 and, and before too long you're overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't even know where to start if I can do all these things and all the rest of it. And uh, I find Christians to be in these two camps. And this morning, if you're wanting a fluffy Easter message or whatever, uh, feel free to leave now. Because uh, you're not going to get it. This morning, um, I'm bringing a message that I hope can bring Christians together. And um, Christians have been apart for too long. And uh, I know this, the early church, they had no idea what they were doing. All they did was, we saw a dead man walking through the streets. We're going to follow him. And, uh, you know, but they kept practicing their temple prostitution or whatever it was. And I know what I saw. And, uh, and then you've got the other group who were righteous and everything else. And, um, and they were like, uh, you know, we discovered the Messiah. We even had a name for him. And um, I just know that these two groups had nothing in common except they saw the truth walking. <laughs> And they said, we're going to follow this guy. We have never seen a dead man come out of the grave before. We believe in him. We're going to follow him. But of course, they're coming from all over the place. And trying to get their stuff together was not easy. And um, Paul and different apostles had to work hard to try and bring them together. And today I noticed the same thing in church life. I noticed those who, um, you know, so-called, I don't use these words, but so-called, uh, you know, uh, grace uh, doctrine, grace preachers, and uh, so-called obedience preachers and never shall the twain meet and uh, you know one side is opposed to the other side's way of doing things and the other side's opposed to the other side's way of doing things I just think how can the church grow and reach the world when there's two camps and so you think why would this guy pick Easter Sunday to bring this up of all things 
Well, why not? Why not? Jesus' resurrection brought people together who didn't agree on much. But they knew what they believed. Uh, just for all the parents in the room too, we've got a full kids church program next week, but I just really wanted everybody in here this morning. And uh, so if you cry, I'm good with that. You know what I mean? Um, it's okay. Make some noise. Paul was preaching once and a man fell out of a window and died and broke his neck. So um, is there any more bedlam than that? I don't know. Jesus was preaching once and they opened up the roof and lowered a man through the mat. And here we are like, I think that baby's making a noise. You know what I mean? In church, I'm like, give me a break. Uh, just get over it. And uh, God wants to bless us. Amen. I picked uh, a passage from Hebrews 10. You can turn there. If you haven't got a Bible, sidle up to next to someone who has. See if there's even division people. Some people think the Bible should be paper. And other people say, no, it should be electronic. And... Uh, yeah, well, as long as it's King James, everybody's happy. So, I'm reading out of the New International Version, or nearly inspired version, as some of you would refer to it. And, uh, and on Hebrews 10, and verse 1 says, The law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming, not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never, by the same sacrifices repeated endlessly, year after year, make perfect those uh, who draw near in worship. If it could, would they have not been stopped being offered? For the worshippers would have been cleansed once and for all and would no longer uh, have felt guilt for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual reminder of our sins. Because it's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said this, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, Here I am. Everybody say, Here I am. Everybody say it louder. Here I am. Here I am, it is written, about me in the scroll, I have come to do your will, O God. First, he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings you did not desire, nor were you pleased with them. Although, he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And by that will, we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Day after day, every priest stands and performs. Everyone says, before. His religious duties, again and again, he offers the same sacrifices. When it can never take sins away. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. Since that time, he waits for his enemies to be made his footstool. Because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with them. After that time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. And he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. Verse 18. And where there have been forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, a new and living way, everyone say, a new and living way, opened up to us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, full of assurance and faith, having your heart sprinkled and cleansed from a guilty conscience. Oh, what does all that mean? For goodness sake. Uh, what a wonderful passage of scripture. And um, I really feel that uh, God is going to speak to us powerfully to bring us together this morning. 
Uh, it sounds exciting to me, a new and living way. You know, what wonderful words, a new and a living way. And uh, the curtain, you know, we preached about this last Easter. Um, Blake preached about it so well, about, you know, the most significant thing that happened during the ministry in time of Jesus was the tearing of a curtain. Um, you know, it's curtains. <laughs> curtains for you, devil. Um, and, uh, and that people couldn't go behind the curtain. Only one person could ever go behind the curtain each year, and he was absolutely wetting himself with fear that he died when he was in there. And now the curtain's open, and, uh, and God is saying, I want you all to come in. I want you all in my presence. Because I know when we come into the presence of God, we are changed forevermore. And, uh, you know, whatever you think is going to bring change, I'll tell you this quite honestly and candidly, time in the presence of God will change you. Reading His Word will change you. Uh, Worshipping together will change you. Uh, receiving and giving prayers will change you. And uh, time in the presence of God, His anointing on you will change you. But the relationship that we have, this new and living one, it says Jesus bought a new and living one, a new relationship, church. But a relationship is only as good as what you understand it to be. And uh, this morning I think some of us, and even myself at different times, haven't really understood what this relationship is meant to be. And I see these two groups of people sometimes relating to God mechanically. I just think God is so distressed when we relate to Him mechanically. One group relates to God mechanically through obeying the law. And... Um, you know, they, they think I'm going to please God by performing all of these things and doing all of these things. And when I do all of these things, um, God will be pleased about it. Well, guess what? Um, it's highly doubtful. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. How, uh, you? Bless you, God. Highly, uh, highly doubtful that us following the whole heap of rules and regulations really excites God that much. Uh, I'd also say this, those of you who are doing it, you're not doing it very well. Um, I've seen you lot. Give up now, or you're behind. <laughs> Trying to obey everything to please God is a fruitless exercise. It's uh, relating to Him mechanically. And so all of those who believe in the grace of God are saying, Amen, brother, Amen. Well, watch out because I'm coming after you now. And, uh, and so those who say that well, we relate through the grace of God and we have a different relationship, I actually watch personally also living in fear. Uh, because one mob is living in fear that the people under the law are trying to perform everything right. The other mob is living in fear trying to confess everything right. And uh, here in Boa, I can't sit under that teaching. It brings me under the law. I'm like, get over yourself. Get over yourself. And right confession, constantly confessing, no, no, I'm forgiven, I thank you Lord I'm forgiven, I thank you Lord I'm free, I thank you Lord that you set me free, I thank you Lord that your blood has set me free, I thank you Lord I'm forgiven, I thank you Lord I'm not under the curse, I thank you Lord I'm not under the works, I thank you Lord I'm like, oh my God, God must be there, what are you doing? What are you doing? One group, what are you doing? The other group, what are you doing? And uh, I just want a relationship with you. You're being mechanical, trying to confess everything right, believe everything right, think everything right. You're being mechanical, trying to do everything right and obey everything right. And God's like, what have I created here? Where's the new living way, church? And why is there division? Why is there two camps under the one head? And I just believe that we need to understand more thoroughly this new living way, this relationship, what God intended it to be, not what you understand it to be. The law group is offering the same religious acts and justifications. When I found myself under the law of God, I find myself fighting uh, for my conscience, trying to justify why things have happened to me. You know, when I become aware of the fact that I'm, I'm not living the way God wants me. Oh, yeah, but, you know, there's all these reasons uh, and all this stuff that's come against me and I'm working as hard as I can and doing as much as I can and I'm really uh, trying everything I can to justify what I'm doing. They justify their actions. 
to avoid condemnation. Because you know the, the law condemns. Do we agree with that? Scripture says the law condemns. And so when we find ourselves in that thing, we're constantly trying to fight against condemnation. We're constantly trying to justify, constantly trying to find reasons uh, why things are happening to us. The other group, the grace group, is offering the same religious line and confession to avoid coming under condemnation. I think one group's fighting one way to avoid coming under condemnation, the other group's fighting another way to come under condemnation. The new way is to say, God, here I am. Everyone say, here I am. And uh, you love me, and I love you. Christians have this um, weird, one-way uh, relationship with God. It's where we send everything His way. God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you so much, God. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for my church. I thank you for the Holy Spirit. I thank you for my job and my ministry. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Is there anything wrong with thanking God? No, not at all. But what is wrong is a lot of us don't understand our relationship works both ways. Have you ever heard God say, no, I thank you? I'm so thankful for you, Lord. No, I'm thankful for you. If we're constantly offering thanks to God, and we're not conscious of the fact that He's thankful for us, church, what type of relationship is that? We're forever telling God how much we love Him. Lord, I love you, 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 I love you. I love you, I love you. Yeah, well, I love you too, mate. What sort of relationship would I have with my wife if I said, I love you? I love it feels good. I love you. Well, her heart's melting right now. Look out. Can I get a catch up behind that wall? I love you. I love you, honey. I love you so much. And what sort of relationship would it be if she said to me, thanks? Pretty devastating one. Our relationship with God is two way, church. God, I've missed you. I've missed you. I've missed you too. I've missed you too. God, I'm so thankful for you. I'm thankful for you too. I know this is confronting to people who think, oh, we should, it's all about the Lord, it's all about whatever. It's not a normal relationship, church, if it doesn't work both ways. Lord, I'm upset with you. Yeah, well, mate, guess what? I get upset with you too. So we're even. But we would dare and think to say that we should say we're upset with a holy, righteous, almighty, all-knowing God And he sees it. Come out of the closet, church. I'm upset with you, God, sometimes. I get frustrated with you, God. Yeah, well, I get frustrated with you, mate. And this is the type of new and living way that says, here I am. Here I am, God. Here I am present before you. Here I am speaking to you. And here I am listening to your words to me. And here I am, Lord, judge me. Some people are going to freak out when I say judge me. What? He's Jewish. He's under the law. No, I'm not under the law. I have a relationship with someone that can see a lot better than I can. Church. So I can say, Lord, here I am, judge me. Do I feel condemned when God judges something in my life? No way. Because I'm not under condemnation. I've got a boss who can see some issues in my life. Here I am, Lord. Show me my sins. Some people are freaking out right now. Because sin consciousness is a teaching. If we become conscious of sin, we come under the law and we come under condemnation. 
mechanics. Can you see the mechanics? I've got a formula for why I don't want to be conscious of my sin. Guess what? My sin is destroying lives. It would be a good idea if God pointed it out to me somewhere along the line. Amen? The good idea is, mate, this is hurting your wife, your kids in your church. Stop it. Do I come under condemnation? No, I do not. I say, thank you. I say, why do I do it? I don't know why I do it. And God said, I'll tell you why I do it. Amen? And I don't have to walk around every time. Oh, Lord, thank you, I'm forgiven. Thank you, my sin's not counted against me. Thank you, Lord, I'm free from it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God's like, what are you doing, mate? Let me help you. Let me speak to you. Say, here I am. Say, here I am, Lord. It's the new and living way. Simply being present before God. Sometimes my wife very rarely catches me when she's speaking to me, saying, are you listening to me? And I say, oh, you've got to get a down pat. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what did I say? Oh, uh, from when? Like, where do you want me to go from? Because I heard everything, so she's like... Sometimes I'm with my wife, but I'm not present. I'm elsewhere. Christian today say, here I am. I'm present. My heart is open. I'm listening. I've got no fear. I don't have fear of the Lord. I don't have fear of not having the right confession. I just want to know what you say over my life. I want to be truly present before God. Amen? Religious acts and religious confessions, whether it's law or grace, are both just constructs, church. They're both just constructs. Wandering around trying to do the right thing is just a, some kind of man-made construct about how to have a relationship with God. And walking around trying to confess the right thing is just a man-made construct about trying to please God. Neither of them are, here I am, a new and living one. Law people never change because they're always defending themselves, always denying, because they're always afraid of punishment. Who wants to say, I've broken every law under the sun, never been able to fulfil it, never been able to do it? Who wants to say that? Certainly not people who are under the law, they're afraid of punishment. The grace camp uh, of people lack real accountability. Because they're forever saying, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. It doesn't matter, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. It's like my boss saying, just build what you like, mate. I'm freaking out about what I'm going to build. It's like the other boss saying, do these 1,000 things in correct order. I'm freaking out. Because I can't carry out his instructions. Both bosses are no good to me, church. Neither boss is any good to me. But the boss that I can come before boldly through the curtain and say, here I am. That boss is going to be a good boss to me. Amen? And I don't want a church full of people one side, the other side, one view, the other view. I want a group of people saying, here I am. I'm thankful for you, God. And God says, I'm thankful for you. Do you know I'm saying, God, I'm depending on you? Who's ever said, God, I'm depending on you? Raise your hand if you ever said, God, I'm depending on you. Well, guess what? As difficult as it is theologically to understand, God's depending on you as well. God's depending on you as well. Some of you think that's outrageous. God is sovereign and independent and requires nothing from mankind. He is who He is. He's the great I Am. Get over yourself, church. God's depending on you to love your neighbour. God's depending on you to forgive your wife, your husband. God's depending on you to share your faith. God's depending on you, church. It's a real relationship. I have a relationship with Blake. He depends on me. I'm the broad. I depend on him. He's the brains. Together we're unstoppable. We depend on each other. Oh, feels good. depend on each other. Don't get all toxic on me here today about all oh, God doesn't do, he's not dependent on anything. I know all that stuff. But the point is this is a real relationship church. 
Here I am. God says, and here I am. I've missed you, God. I've missed you too, man. I love you, God. I love you too, man. I'm depending on you, God. I'm depending on you too, man. Real relationship is about both parties being present, church. Two ways. God, you can judge me. I'm not afraid. Either way. Either way, Lord. I'm going to have a clean conscience. Because of the blood of Christ. If you judge that I've done good works, I'll have a clean conscience through that. If you judge that I've erred and transgressed and, and uh, you know, my, my life has damaged other lives through sin, I'll still have a clean conscience, church. But because I've got a real relationship, I can say, Lord, can you help me understand this? Because, man, I want to back away from this. Because that's what you want. And here I am. And I want to see this stuff. And I want to know this stuff. What a ridiculous thought that God doesn't want us to be conscious of sin, church. All right, give me a break. Sin hurts people. Be nice if we could wake up to that. It'd be nice if, even if we couldn't understand why we do the things we do, God could leave us in God. Like a good shepherd and say, look, here's where you are, mate. Right? But this is where I want to bring you. And God does different works in different personalities, church. I'm done.